squash, squash, and squash once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're not talking about any type of squash. We're talking about acorn squash. That's right. It's the squash that resembles an acorn. So whether you love it or hate it, please listen and watch on. Why? Because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of the acorn squash. All right, first up, a little bit of background information. What looks like an acorn but tastes like a squash? The answer is simple, the acorn squash. Named for its acorn-like shape, the acorn squash is part of the cucurbita family of fruit. The acorn squash is indigenous to North and Central America and was introduced to European settlers by Native Americans during the time of colonization. Also, acorn squash is also known as pepper squash or Des Moines squash. So there we have it, guys. A lot of background information about the one and only acorn squash. Interesting. All right, now it's time for a few fun facts. Acorn squash is interesting, wool and or intriguing because of the difference in nutritional value of the raw vegetable or fruit versus the cooked version. When you have baked acorn squash, the nutritional quality increases significantly for almost every vitamin and mineral. Huh, didn't know that. However, the presence of three important antioxidants found in raw acorn squash nutrition, such as beta carotene, lutein, and zeaxanthin, diminishes to zero when cooked. So, for that reason, it's not a bad idea to eat acorn squash both raw and cooked to maximize its nutritional content. So there we have it guys, a few fun facts about the one and only acorn squash. All right, believe it or not, the fun facts don't stop there, they continue. <laughs> After slicing your acorn squash in half, don't automatically trash the seeds. Look with pumpkins. The seeds of acorn squash are edible and high in antioxidants. So take a look at the picture. As you can see, it has been sliced in half, and there you can see lots and lots and lots of seeds. So, as the verbis just said, don't throw them away. Clean them, eat them, and receive all the health benefits. Also, acorn squash is one of the many types of winter squash available. What's the distinction between winter squash, summer squash, and pumpkins, you may ask? Well, simply, it's the time of year they're eaten. So there we have it, guys. We now know the difference between the different types of winter squashes. All right, now it's time for the not-so-fun facts. Like many common produce items, acorn squash is particularly susceptible to the absorption of pesticides and should be purchased in organic varieties whenever possible. Because it's low in purines and oxalates, acorn squash is generally considered very hypoallergenic. However, there are some people who have a winter squash allergy. So stop eating acorn squash and contact your doctor immediately if you develop rashes, hives, or notice difficulties in breathing. So take a look at the picture. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are allergic to acorn squash, then you may not <laughs> mind wearing a shirt that lets people know. <laughs> so there we have it, guys. A few not so fun facts about the one and only acorn squash. All right, believe it or not, I got some more not so fun facts. Another common reaction to squash is mild irritant contact dermatitis, an inflammation and swelling of the skin caused by handling this fruit with bare hands. It's more common in other forms of squash, but if you find your skin becomes itchy, red, or swollen when handling acorn squash, try using gloves when preparing it. Lastly, the only medicinal interaction known to occur from acorn squash is related to the beta carotene in the raw form of the fruit. Large amounts of beta carotene can interact with statins and mineral oil. 
So if you take either of these, try eating your acorn squash only in cooked form. Wow, who knew? So there we have it, guys. A few more not-so-fun facts about the one and only acorn squash. All right, it's time to talk about the 520 rule. Ladies and gentlemen, the 520 rule really is all about reading and understanding food labels. That's right. Ultimately, it's a guide. It's a guide that lets us know whether or not a food or beverage item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, specifically when we talk about the 520 rule, we're really talking about percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now let's take a look at our sample food label. As you can see, it is divided into several parts, meaning colored in different colors. First, we have the purple portion, which basically highlights the percent daily value column. Now, as you can notice, percent daily value is basically represented as a percentage. Some are as low as 0%, and believe it or not, some of them can be as high as 100%, or it may actually even exceed 100%. Next up is the yellow portion. Now, the yellow portion of our food label basically highlights those nutrients which unfortunately do a really good job at promoting sickness, illness, and disease within the body temple. So say hello to saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium. Now, because these nutrients do a really good job at promoting disease within the body, you definitely want to make sure that those percentages are as close to zero as possible. Next up are the nutrients that are highlighted in light blue, such as dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron, which basically represent all vitamins and minerals. Now, unlike the yellow nutrients, the blue nutrients do just the opposite. Rather than promote disease and illness within the body temple, they promote health, they promote total wellness within the body. So if anything, you want to make sure that whatever you're consuming, whether it's a food item or beverage item, you want to make sure that whatever it is has its percent daily values as close to 100% as possible. Now, let's dig a little deeper into the 520 rule. Ladies and gentlemen, if a food or beverage item offers 0% to 9% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is considered not a good source of that particular nutrient. Next, if the food or beverage item contains 10% to 19% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is considered a good source of that particular nutrient. Lastly, if the food or beverage item offers 20% DV or greater, then that food or beverage item is considered an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it, guys, the ins and outs about the 520 rule. All right, now it's time to dive into a few nutrition facts. So for today's lecture, we're going to simply say that a single serving of acorn of acorn squash <laughs> is equal to a single cup of baked acorn squash. So here's what it contains. Remember, we're only talking about one serving, which is equal to one cup. Okay. So first up, only 115 calories, 29.9 grams of carbs. Look at this, 2.3 grams of protein. And here you thought fruit or in particular squash, doesn't contain protein, well, it's time to rethink that myth. Also, only 0.3 grams of fat. And check it out, nine grams of fiber, amazing. Now, when it comes to vitamin C, it's gonna offer us 37% DV, excellent source. Potassium, 26% DV, excellent source. Manganese, 25% DV, excellent source. Next up is thiamine, coming in at 23% DV, excellent source. Magnesium, 22% DV, excellent source. Then we have vitamin B6 coming in at 20% DV, excellent source. Next up is vitamin A coming in at 18% DV, good source. Iron, 11% DV, good source. Folate coming in at 10% DV, good source. Now, when it comes to 
niacin, calcium, phosphorus, and copper, they all come in at only 9% DV. So unfortunately, a single serving, one cup of acorn squash bait is not a good source of niacin, calcium, phosphorus, and copper. But understand this, remember, these nutrition facts are based on a single serving, which is one cup. So if you're looking for more niacin, calcium, phosphorus, and copper, all you have to do is double the servings. <laughs> See how easy that is? So they go from being not a good source to a good source. So there we have it, guys. The nutrition facts about the one and only acorn squash. All right. Now that we've gone over the nutrition facts, it's time to focus on the health benefits. But before we do, Coach D wants to talk with you very quickly about the principle of cause and effect. Now, some of us may already be familiar with this principle. It's known as one of these seven hermetic principles. And basically, it states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There really is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, everything happens for a reason. So why do I bring this up? Well, it's simple. If you want to experience health and wellness within your life, well, you have to cause it. Now, it's the same thing for sickness, illness, and disease. If you want sickness, illness, and disease in your life, well, you have to cause that too. But let's remember something. The 23% challenge is all about health. It's all about total wellness in seven days. That's right. So let's now dive into the health benefits, which, by the way, are the effects. The nutrients are the causes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list the health benefit, but I'm going to let you know exactly which nutrient causes it. So first up, acorn squash is high in antioxidants to help fight free radical damage. Now, which nutrient does that? Say hello to beta carotene. Secondly, acorn squash boosts the immune system and decreases inflammation. Say hello to vitamin C. Also, acorn squash reduces high blood pressure. Say hello to potassium. Also, acorn squash aids in fighting cancer. Say hello to vitamin C. Next, acorn squash improves the look of your skin, right? So maybe you have pimples. Maybe you are seeing early wrinkles, <laughs> right? Well, if that's you, then it's definitely time to consume more acorn squash. Why? Because it's a great source of vitamin C and potassium. Also, acorn squash supports good prostate health. Say hello to vitamin C. And lastly, acorn squash may reduce the risk of metabolic syndrome. Say hello to fiber. So there we have it, guys. Lots and lots and lots of health benefits of acorn squash. All right, now it's time to talk about food. Yes, plant food at that. Guys, it's time to visit our website for everything vegan. Say hello to ForksOverKnives.com. By the way, there is a movie which I highly recommend you watch. It's amazing. <laughs> now, as always, I went to the website, ForksOverKnives.com, did just a little bit of research on acorn squash, and I found two amazing vegan acorn squash recipes that I want to share with you right now. So the first one is curried acorn squash hummus with crudites. I hope I pronounced that word correctly. Take a look at the picture. Looks amazing. Now the second vegan acorn squash recipe that I want to share with you today is entitled chocolate mousse pie. Take a look at that picture. Makes your mouth water, doesn't it? Now, here's the really interesting part, is that if either one of these recipes interests you, then all you have to do is click on the description box. Why? Because I am providing you with not one, but two links to each recipe. That's right. Now, when you get to the site, you're gonna find some amazing information. It's gonna give you the cooking time, cooking instructions, and an ingredient list. So all you have to do is make it, taste it, come back to the video and share your experience in the comment box below. We greatly appreciate it. So there we have it guys, not one but two vegan acorn squash recipes from 
ForksOverKnives.com. All right, 23% Nation, I hear you. A lot of you say, well, Coach D, thanks for the fun facts. Coach D, thanks for the nutrition facts. But what I really want to know is, when in the world can I eat more acorn squash, right? Or when should I eat more acorn squash? Well, guys, the perfect day, and I do mean the perfect day, is Nature Day. What? Nature Day? Yes, good old Nature Day. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, maybe you've been living under a rock and you know absolutely nothing about the challenge. Well, basically, it's a monthly seven-day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, your relationships. Oh, and by the way, it also helps to save good old planet Earth. Now, here's the thing about the challenge is that it's the first seven days of every single month. The first all the way through the seventh. Now, the first day of the challenge is Nature Day. So what does that mean? It simply means that the first day of every month is Nature Day. So whether it's July 1st, April 1st, or even November 1st, it's always Nature Day. All right, so maybe you are intrigued. Maybe you are inspired to participate in Nature Day, right? Well, that's good. Maybe you're the type of person who is obese. Maybe you're the type of person who has heart disease. Maybe you suffered a heart attack or stroke. Maybe you have diabetes or maybe you have cancer. Maybe you have some type of digestive issue such as constipation. Or maybe you have skin problems such as acne and pimples and rosacea and, and eczema, right? Well, guys, if that's you, I got to tell you something. Eat more plants, right? Hippocrates simply said, let food be thy medicine and let medicine be thy food. But I would like to add something to that. More specifically, let plant foods be thy medicine and let plant foods <laughs> and let medicine be thy plant foods, ladies and gentlemen. So if that's you, and maybe you want to transition to a more whole food plant-based diet, I want to offer you four options that I believe can help make that transition easier. So consider becoming a 3% vegan. Now, what in the world is that? Well, it's anyone, man, woman, or child who chooses to eat only plant foods only one day out of an entire month. Now, if you want to try it, why don't you do it the first day of every month? Why not Nature Day? Now, your second option is to become a 10% vegan. Now, what is that? Well, it's anyone, man, woman, or child who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only three days out of an entire month. Now, which three days? Well, I'll leave that up to you. Next up is to try to become a 17% vegan, which translates to only five days out of an entire month, right? So that's any person, man, woman, or child who only eats plant foods and drinks only water. And lastly is a 23% vegan. Now, technically, that's what Coach D considers himself to be. So what does that mean? Well, it means that I only eat foods that come from the five food groups of plant foods. And what are those five food groups you may be wondering? Well, fruits, vegetables and herbs, nuts and seeds, legumes, meaning beans and peas, and lastly, whole grains. And of course, I only drink water. So there we have it, guys, the ins and outs about Nature Day. All right. Now, maybe you want to try it and you have no support. You have no one who wants to help you out. Well, rely on Coach D. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to offer you some help, some assistance, some advice, some tips. Right. Why? Because I want your Nature Day to be successful. So here are Coach D's tips for a successful Nature Day. Tip number one, go visit your local grocery store. Now, here's the thing. When you get into the grocery store, you're only going to go to two places. Number one is to the produce section. Why? Because that's where all of the fresh plant foods are located. And number two, go to the freezer aisle. Why? Because that's where all of the frozen plant foods are located. Now, some of you may be wondering, what's better, fresh 
or frozen. Well, believe it or not, the nutrient content of both are pretty comparable. However, if you notice that you're not eating your plant foods as quickly as you should, then you probably will not opt for the frozen variety. Why? Because they last longer. It's just that simple. Tip number two, go visit your local farmer's market. Now, I highly recommend farmer's markets for people who absolutely must only eat organic produce. That's right, guys. Believe it or not, farmer's markets only cater to the organic market. So if you absolutely must have organic plant foods, then definitely go to your nearest farmer's market. Tip number three, go visit the prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. Now, once you're finished with the produce section and the freezer aisle, walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Now, depending on the name of the store, they may call it the kitchen, whatever the name, prepared dishes section or the kitchen, it really doesn't matter. Just walk over, talk to the person behind the counter and ask them if they have any vegan, not vegetarian, but vegan options. Now, if they do, ask for a quick sample and providing you like it, Purchase your food, either by the pound or if you really, really like it, go ahead and purchase two pounds. Tip number four, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to support the vegan community. And I can't think of a better way but to go eat at a vegan restaurant. That's right. One of the greatest advantages to eating at a vegan restaurant is that normally they hire vegan chefs who basically know exactly how to cook plant foods so that they retain most of their nutrients. That's right. Plus, they not only know how to cook the plant foods, but they know which plant foods to combine to equal the most delicious, nutritious dishes, right? So if you don't want to cook, you don't know how to cook, you don't have time to cook, go visit your local vegan restaurant. And my last tip, is for those of us who prefer someone else to do the cooking for us, right? Then I highly recommend you do a little bit of research and look up vegan meal prep companies. That's right. Here's the thing. They make it, they deliver it, you eat it. It's just that simple. So there we have it, guys. Five tips to help make your nature day successful. All right. 23% nation, it's time for our question of the day. And today it's a true false question. Here we go. Cooked acorn squash is more nutritious than raw acorn squash. Now, I believe I covered that earlier in the video. So if you missed it, you didn't hear it, please rewind and write your answer in the comment box below. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I sign out, I got to ask you to please like, subscribe, and share the video, especially if you love acorn squash. And don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out. Always remember to take care. God bless and never, ever forget that Coach D loves you.